Um, because here we're shifting our attention to your Toronto Blue Jays. All right, we got projections coming up here, um, and I. I I toyed with whether to leave this for the beginning or the end, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and, and we're going to do it right now. We're going to lead off with Vladimir Guerrero Jr., the young superstar uh, of your Toronto Blue Jays. And what's interesting is that he's coming off a season where um, a lot of people would call it a disappointment. Um, and that's where I kind of want to start before we even look ahead to next year. Um, Karen, I want to start with you. How much of a disappointment is a season where he hit 32 home runs, drove in 97 runs, a weighted runs created plus of 132. How disappointing for you was his 2022 season? And he was an all-star again. Um, Mm -hmm. And a gold glove winner. Yes. I mean, maybe a tiny bit, if that. I I mean, I I, I expect we saw him break out in 2021. And the Blue Jay fan in me and and the the Vladdy hype train that we've been hearing for years. But part of me half expected him to post those numbers for the next 15 years. And and I mean, realistically, even Hall of Famers, you look up and down their stats year by year, and it's not the exact same numbers every year. There are, is some fluctuation. So what was it a disappointment? Maybe a little bit. But I mean, that's to me, that says something about the kind of talent that we've got in him. That's in a season where he's legitimately an all-star, his overall results were a little bit of a disappointment. Right, right. And that's just it, right? Like, Steve, when you look at Vlad, the problem, I guess, is that, as Karen said, if this were somebody with a 10-year career, we'd be we'd have a little bit more context for the comparison here. But as of now, we have his monster 2021 season, um, and then we have 2022, which was a great season. You know, 32 home runs is not a disappointing season at all. Weighted runs created plus over 130. That's not a bad season. But because we don't have much to compare it to, Steve, it does feel like a bit of a step back for Vladdy. Well, I think you need to keep it in the context of the lineup as a whole. If a player has a down year or or a drop back in production, you need to look at the players in front of and behind him. And that might give you an idea as to why that was. I, I would say having watched is all the games that we did that Vladdy was pitched to much differently. And it took Vladdy a little bit of time to adjust and, um, and which he did, you know, and again, when you drive in 97 runs, you're having a pretty good year, but I do think, especially the players behind him, but even to a certain degree, the players in front of him, uh, I think Springer had a terrific year. So again, some production. I mean, just if you're having a guy in front of you having a pretty good year with increased production, you're going to have fewer chances potentially. But I think it was the players behind him where he really wasn't given the opportunities uh, to hit. I, I don't know why they kept pitching to him the way, all year in 2021. They were walking to Oscar Hernandez, but they were pitching to Vladdy. You know, and we all love Tio, but if I had to pitch to somebody. I'm not pitching to Vladdy. I'm pitching to Teoscar Hernandez. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what's interesting, too, I read today at Sportsnet uh, that it looks like Vladdy may have been trying to chase those numbers a little bit. Uh, He admitted uh, that he was kind of focused on trying to repeat um, and put up those those monster numbers again. Um, And, of course, baseball is probably one of the few sports where – the more you try, the worse you're going to do, right? And that's kind of potentially had something to do with why he struggled. Um, struggled. I, I Here we are again using that word, but the, why he took a step back in 2022, even though it wasn't that much of a step back. His step back is somebody else's like career year, like a Brandon right. Drury career year. <laughs> Go ahead, Karen. His, his OP, I was just looking at some stats, his – OPS of 819 was 16th best in the American League. So that's right. When you put it in that perspective, it's really not a down season. It's just Mm -hmm. there's when you're using the comparison base of his previous season, then. 
Yeah, that's just that's just it. Yep. So let's look at uh, some some of the projections uh, for Vladdy next season, and then let's start with the um, the one that is going to um, grab the most attention, and that's the home runs. Let's start there. Uh, Forty eight in twenty twenty one, thirty two twenty twenty two. Uh, now looking at Steamer has him at forty home runs. I'm um, not sure if that's going to take into account the new dimensions in Rogers Center, if that has anything to do with it at all. It may, it may not. Um, but Karen, let's start there. 40 home runs. Is that a, I guess, first of all, is that a fair projection, but also does it even matter? Um, <laughs> what, what do projections matter? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> do- <laughs> do, or, do, or, or steamer projections or fan graph projections where they where they use fake numbers anyway right so does it matter how many home runs he hits i guess is my the, what i actually meant there but. <laughs> okay that's i i mean yes that's one of the numbers that matter his overall production matters home, home runs are one of the things that matter it's not the only thing but is that i mean that's that's a reasonable projection. It's not. It's, it's not ridiculously higher, though. Like, are you are you asking if I would go under or over, or we're saving that question for later? Well, yeah, no. If you wanna, if you wanna take an over and under on that, go ahead. Um, but I think really, I'm just trying to trying to get at like a general sense of like the power, right? Cause that's the first thing that a lot of people will, will go right to is to say whether or not he's had a good season. And when you look at dropping down from, you know, 48 down to where he was last year at 30, uh, excuse me, 32, that, that means something to some people. I guess my question to you is, does it even matter if he hits 40 home runs? I mean, yeah, like it's not, Hitting home runs to me is not the be all and end all. It's not the only thing that a hitter can do right or should do right. But yeah, it's for for one of your producers. Then yeah, to a point, it does matter how many home runs you hit. So I would, I'd go over. I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna write him down for sixty or anything like that, or or even fifty. He could do fifty, but. Mm-hmm. The, the, the funny thing about Vlad, as I've learned by watching watching him and, and hearing those who know more about me or m- more about baseball than I do, is that Vlad, in terms of his swing, he's not a natural home run hitter per se. He's a line drive hitter. So <laughs> it'll be interesting how bringing in the fences a bit, but also making like ma- making them higher up it's for someone who's a line drive hitter that almost seems counterintuitive interesting and it's interesting how that works yeah it's interesting that you say that because rocket just chimed in let's be honest whatever home runs vlad hits the dimensions aren't going to matter for him since when he gets it it's generally a no doubter i i would agree with that except several of his home runs are wall scrapers they're they're line drive shots that are just hit so damn hard um, that they don't have a choice but to to leave the yard, right? Like, so I'm interested actually uh, to to see how much that wall um, will play into things. Um, but Steve, I'm going to ask you when you're looking at a player like Vladdy, who is clearly the the piece to this Blue Jays lineup. <clears throat> what is it that you are going to be looking for when you're going to the projections and all of that stuff? What is it that you that you go to first if it's not home runs if it's not batting average or weighted runs created plus or expected (laughs) then then what what is what projection number are you drawn to first um i'm really looking at runs batted in and i'm looking at ops not weighted not plus not expected not made up now that fairy tale real OPS, real runs batted in. Uh, for me, that's what I'm looking at. Um, Karen hit it right on the head. I don't think his swing is going to be affected uh, by the dimension. I think he's going to need to make any adjustments. Uh, if if he hits 
a bullet in the gap for a double that maybe could have gone a wall before, but still drives in runners. Do you really care whether he drove him in with a mm-hmm. double or did, whether he hits him with a home run? Yeah, you really don't. Right, right. So then in that vein, we'll look at those those two numbers first. Um, and Karen, we'll start with the RBIs. Um, Steamer has him at 100 RBI. Is that probably right about where he is? Again, it's so, <laughs> it's so hard to say because, and I mean, I, as, as a baseball fan, I, I grew up with, you know, ho- home runs and RBIs and, and, and batting average as those are the offensive stats that you pay attention to. And nowadays it's your, your slash line is average on base percentage, slugging percentage. And one of the reasons why our RBIs are problematic is they defend, they depend to a large extent on what your teammates are doing mm-hmm. or fail to do. I mean, if, if he has a really good season and a lot of the other blue Jays aren't doing very much with the bats, how many RBI opportunities is he going to have, you know, through no fault of his own? So mm-hmm. is is 100 reasonable? I, I think if the Jays' offense has a better than average season, that he'll probably do more than that. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. And okay. it's hard to say because what wide range of outcomes. Where have I heard that sure. before? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, Steve, 100 RBI. Is it doable? Because I have my answer. I'm just going to be the polite host and I'll let you go first, Steve. But no, it's doable. And I, and I would definitely bet the over. I mean, I, I'm going to, I would go, you know, to, to my bet stamp app and I would bet the over if, if that, you know, exotic is there. I mean, I'm going to do that. I believe that this year's lineup especially because elimination of the shift and a lot of other different things. I really think there are going to be more RBA opportunities for the, for the players, the production players, three, four, five, even going down to six, than there may, may have been, you know, last season. So yeah. I, I'm going to go with the over and, and because Vladdy is, he's a smart hitter. He's also an instinctive hitter. Uh, he's not, he's never going to focus on the homers. I think Karen had said that earlier as well, but, but cause of that, you know, I think he's going to have more opportunities to use the whole field to dr- drive runners in. Cause I think he learned his lesson last year and, you know, now rather than coming back and having Charlie always clapping, no matter what the outcome is, he's got John Schneider and he's got Don Mattingly now to come back to. And I can, Don Mattingly is not shy to come back there and say, yeah. Hey, nice swing. Why, why didn't you go the other way? Or why, you know, mm-hmm. why, why are you trying to hit the home run here? I, I think he's going to have that support, that practical everyday advice support that I think has been lacking in the, in the past for him. So I, I'm going to say he's way over on the, on the hundred RBIs. Yeah. All of that. And, uh, Dulcimeris actually took the words right out of my mouth. I don't even have to do the show anymore. I could just get every, all our people in our comments section. Um, but Vlad will have more RBI opportunities this year, predict more Jays getting on base ahead of him, uh, and the speedy guys as well. Um, so for me, it's the additions of the offense. Uh, last year, uh, I would say that the offense was more home run reliant than I think it will be in 2023. Uh, so, that's where we are. Karen, we're going to start now. <clears throat> we're going to bring in our bet stamp over and under. Okay. Vladimir Guerrero Jr.'s OPS next year, 900. Karen, do you take the over or do you take the under? Uh, I'm predicting a pretty big season for Vlad. So as, as much as 900 is good, I'm going to go over. Over. I love it. Steve, over or under 900 OPS for Vladdy next year? Wow. Um, I'm going to be optimistic for once, and I'm going to say over. But if he has an 890 OPS, it 
there's not much between an 890 and a yeah. 910 OPS, to be real honest, unless you're having like what the year he had in 2021, where it's you know, MVP caliber type of season. Um, but so I'm going to I'm going to go over because I want to be optimistic. I, I Like Karen, I believe he's going to have a big year. I mean, I, I really right. do. But I don't I think the OPS. If it's just if if it's under nine hundred, it's not going to be my much. Of course, it doesn't matter because Betstamp's going to be able to find the best payout. So it doesn't really matter where it's going to be, <laughs> you know. I mean, because you're going to get a better payout. But honestly, um, if I would say push too, it might even be for a better. That might be a bet you want to stay with way with because I think the OPS could be affected mm-hmm. uh, by the by the how the how the lineup produces around him. Yeah. Yeah, and for that reason, uh, everything you guys said, I also feel feeling very good about Vladdy. So I'm going to take the over, uh, the OPS of 900. Um, whether it's over by a lot or a little, last uh, 2021 it was over a thousand, just barely. So you know he doesn't have to go that high over 900, um, but if he does, it's going to be sweet. Uh, so I'll take the over, um, and don't forget to download the Betstamp app. Use the code JFTC when you do, and you can start betting like a pro.